Abraham. Abraham. Abraham's whole life changed. When he said Abraham, Abraham changed his name to Abraham. He changed dramatically. He was not ordinary. Now he became a father of all nations. Saul, Saul, changed him, knocked him down off the beast, blinded him for three days. Change his whole life around. The same person that was criticizing Jesus. Come on, some of y'all talk back to me. Criticizing Jesus. Saying, don't pay your time. Why are they going to church? Running down a whole critical list. Talking about preachers just selling all their money. Preachers just preaching. The church, the church ain't doing nothing. If, you know, if there was a God, why? So, so. Then change their life around. Now we call him Lord and Savior. Amen. Moses. Moses. That means the change was getting ready to take place. And number four. The miracle of the bush. The bush was not consumed. The bush was on fire, but it was not destroyed. He needed somebody. They can see that you can be on fire, but you can still live a life for the Lord. He needed somebody that would see the fire, that would see his presence, that would hear his presence, and understood what that meant. Not only in the spiritual, but in the natural. As I look, I'm, and I, I am so proud, I am so happy that I came into the life of so many people that I could see their worst days. And I can still see them standing. And then we reciprocate because we've been transparent and you've seen some of my worst days. My worst days. But I'm still standing. So the same thing that happens to the bush can happen to you if you have the glory. Y'all with me? If you have the glory. When God. This. Is about the bush and God's glory. But it's about, it's about you too. Think about for a minute. The bush was burning. But it wasn't consumed. The glory. Was in the bush. Your life burned, not consumed, the glory, God was in the bush. Why do you think you still stand? Why do you think you still here? Because the same God that was in the bush is inside of you. That red thing right yes, there. Yeah. Yeah. In that case right there. Thank you. No, right there in that case. No, right there in the wall. Yeah. Satan. Wow. Satan comes down here. Oh. So you just like the bush. Come on, come on. Satan came to extinguish your fire. He came down to take the heat out the fire, to take the glow away from the fire. See, oh Lord. We got some people. Can I just talk for a minute? We got some people in here right now. I know who you are. Thank you for this. And there's some in here that I don't know. That once upon a time, you know how they start off in the book, in the kitty book. Once upon a time, you were on fire for the Lord. You remember? You played the keyboard. You played the drums. You sang in the choir. You were an usher. 
Even though you were bench member, you got happy on Sunday. You used to run around the church. You go to the job and tell people on Monday how good church was on Sunday. And then you took a 10 year sabbatical from the Lord. Ain't seen you. God ain't seen you. God ain't heard your voice. You ain't put no money in the church. You ain't put no footsteps in the church. You ain't done nothing for God. You've done nothing for 10, 15, 20 years. And the reason is because Satan got a hold of you. He extinguished your fire. You didn't feel that. Even today, we got people that come to church and they tell me, they say, Reverend, you know, I'm thinking about leaving because I don't feel nothing. Relationship with God ain't got nothing to do with feeling bad. that kind of feeling. You don't come to church to get a feeling. You get feel good at home. You get high and feel good. Go get to a man or woman and feel good. Feeling ain't got nothing to do with this. No. No. This relationship with God, this is power. Because we connected to a source that keeps us standing in the midst of trials and tribulations. How come you think we're still here? So he comes so that he can extinguish the fire. In the bush because it had a fuel source. It wasn't sustained by wood. It wasn't sustained by propane gas. Our fire is connected to a, a source that's always plentiful and abundant. So when you see us, even in our worst moment, yeah, 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 yeah. we can still praise him. Yeah. Because our fire, that devil, I'm telling you, that devil tried to extinguish the fire in our life. But if we're connected to the proper fuel source, he can't stop you. That's right. Thank you. I, I want to. Oh, good. Thank you. I'm looking way back there in the back of the church. The gentleman, Deacon Miller, back there, 90, 90 something, 98. Yes. We were coming up. Why are you clapping for him? He's supposed to make it in 98. He's going to make it in at least 102. Why are you all? He's supposed to. I'm you, I'm you right the reason I said he's supposed to, and I'm not, the, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not diminishing his value. I'm elevating his value because I'm saying what he should be able to experience. When we were coming up uh, as young deacons, he, 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 he used to be singing songs like, I keep on burning. <laughs> okay. I can't hold my feet. I keep on burning. I can't hold my feet. That's why he's supposed to be talking to her. So the old folks were singing them songs, I didn't understand that. I was only about 30, 40 years old. I didn't understand what they saying, that the fire keep on being burning and you can't hold your peace. Uh, you know, when you think about it, when the fire is burning, you really can't. If it was for Jesus. <laughs> But see, what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is that when the fire is burning, 
and you connect it to the right source, the devil in hell can't get your fire. The devil in hell cannot put your fire. Got this. The devil can carry this all he wants. <laughs> If you ever thought about leaving the church and the people that left the church still got their hands down. You left the church. You ain't got to feel bad because you left the church. There's a lot of people that walked out on God and left the church. And there's a lot of people that thought about leaving the church. Yeah. Some left, some thought about it, yeah. but you hear that? Yeah. What? Y'all yeah. looking at me like you don't, you, don't, you don't understand the word I'm saying. <laughs> See, because you waiting for me to hoop my way out of here. <laughs> right? Yeah. You waiting to feel church. Yeah. Don't feel church. Yeah. The truth is going to make you free. Yeah. The truth is going to make you free. Yes. The reason that you, the reason that you're back here, and the reason that you will stay here, I don't mean Jordan Temple. I'm talking about with Jesus. I'm not talking about church. I'm talking about your relationship with God. The reason you can't leave, because the fire right. keep on going. Because the fire keeps on burning. You can, you can go back out. You can spend the night at somebody else's house. 
do all the stuff you ain't supposed to be doing. You can go back to the club, you can snort up, you can drink up, you can cuss up, you can do everything you want to do out there, but you can't leave God because the fire keeps on. I know I'm mad about that. Hallelujah. Because he put a fire in you that cannot go out. Woo. I think I'm through. Now I'm going to ask this question again. How many people thought about just leaving the faith? Just leaving. Just, I ain't going to church no more. Be shame. Come on, stand up. All of you all that just felt like I just had. I've done all I can do. I don't mean now, I mean, I mean throughout your life. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my goodness, every preacher except for oh my God. Every preacher felt that, including me. There were times I didn't want to walk back in this pulpit and preach another word. I just felt like just, you know, buying a home, just moving out of the state and doing what I wanted to do and live my life. I felt that church was just a burden. It was just a burden. It's like, it's something that you, you know, why do you have to live like this? And every time, I would take one or two weeks off, not off from pastoring, not off from ministry, but I would go numb for weeks, just numb. Didn't feel nothing. Just cold. Then I would play a little gospel music. I'd have to shake myself. I have to go into prayer. And say, Lord, ain't nothing happening. And then slowly, slowly, a little ember began to glow. That's all it was, just a little ember. And the Holy Spirit will come down and fan it. And it will be a wind coming out of the east. We take the embers and put them together. And the ember will turn into a small flame.
I can't say it was something because we knew what it was because it ain't the first time that we felt it. Hallelujah. Then I go back to the same church, Jordan Temple Missionary Baptist Church. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sit back in the same seat, hear the same music, the same environment that I didn't feel nothing. Nothing changed with the atmosphere. Something changed in me. It's a foolish thing. I know it's so customary, it's so routine. And you've heard it. Something touched me from the top of my head. And it went through my body down to the sole of my feet. It may sound cliche, but somebody say it's real. When that spirit of the Lord overcomes you, takes you over, you get it back. You get excited, you get happy, you want to praise God, you want to tell somebody that I got it all back again. Yeah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Jesus. So for those that are standing, we ought to thank God yeah. that the devil didn't put the fire out. I said that because the devil didn't put the fire out. never felt it before, praise God. Praise God, you've never been to that place. But let me tell you something. Before your life is over, you may have to experience that. But now that you know, now that you've been taught, when you feel like the heat is dissipating, that your fire is going out, you can do something about it before second week. Keep your fire burning. Oh yeah, what was the name of this subject? I didn't forget. What was the name of this song? Destiny in the Bush. Destiny in the Bush. I like people who remember. Destiny is in the bush. The very thing that may look like a problem, the very thing that you might want to turn your face from, the very thing that you don't understand can contain your destiny. If Moses would have took a step back, Destiny wouldn't have met him. But even though he didn't understand it, he recognized the voice. But he kept walking, he kept walking towards the voice. Inside of the voice, inside of the bush, was Moses' destiny. When he caught hold of his destiny, he spent the next 40 years going through the wilderness with stiff-necked people. Remember Buzzard? He was well able to accomplish the mission that God set him on because that was his destiny. So your destiny can be wrapped up in something you don't even identify with. Don't run from the bush. Run to the bush. Come on, let's go. Can you sing it home? To the bush. While she's coming, I want you to think about the message. Let it resonate within you. Moses, Moses, 
walk on water. Dixon, Dixon. Jordan, Jordan. Williams, Williams. God can do great things. He wasn't reciting his name. He was calling him Miller Miller. He was calling him. He was calling him to him. So as you remember the message this morning, he's calling you to him. Hoskins, Hoskins. And 